Welcome to our continuing series, Questions and Answers, from the works of Sri Aurobindo and the Mother. Today's subject is Inertia, Part 2. From Sri Aurobindo Dullness and dispersion are the two sides of the physical's resistance to the peace and concentrated power. They correspond to the inertia and the chaotic activity of physical nature, that aspect of it which makes some scientists now say that all is brought about by chance and there is no certitude of things but only probability. The inertia of the physical consciousness is always a difficult thing to eliminate. It is that, more even than any vital resistance, which keeps all the movements of the ignorance recurring even when the knowledge is there and the will to change. But this difficulty has to be faced and overcome by an equal perseverance in the will of the sadhak. It is a steady flame that must burn, as steady as the obstruction is obstinate. Do not, therefore, be discouraged by the persistence of the obstruction of the ignorance, the persistence of your own will to conquer with the mother's force supporting it will come to the end of the resistance. The physical's tendency to inertia is very great. Even after the habit of living in the higher consciousness is there, some part may feel the pressure of the inertia. Generally, the outermost or most material parts. The inertia usually rises up from the subconscious. It does not abolish the higher consciousness in the physical, but dulls its action or else brings it down from a higher to a lower level. Example, from the intuition to the higher mind or from the higher to the lower ranges of overmind. For some time it resists the completeness of the city. It is only when the most material and the subconscious and the environmental consciousness are quite liberated that this retarding or lowering effect of the primal inertia is entirely overcome. Everything can be responded to. Inertia also can spread waves of itself like other things. The difficulty of the physical nature comes inevitably in the course of the development of the sadhana. Its obstruction, its inertia, its absence of aspiration or movement have to show themselves before they can be got rid of. Otherwise, it will always remain undetected, hampering even the best sadhana and preventing its completeness. This coming up of the physical nature lasts longer or less according to the circumstances, but there is none who does not go through it. What is necessary is not to get troubled or anxious or impatient, for that only makes it last more but to put entire confidence in the mother and quietly persist in faith, patience and steady will for the complete change. It is so that the mother's force can best work in the being. The first means is not to get upset when it, inertia, comes or when it stays. The second is to detach yourself, not only yourself above, 
but yourself below and not identify. The third is to reject everything that is raised by the inertia and not regard it as your own or accept it at all. If you can do these things, then there will be something in you that remains perfectly quiet even in the greatest inertia. Through that quiet part, you can bring down peace, force, even light and knowledge into the inertia itself. Inertia or anything else must be felt as separate, not part of one's real self, which is one with the divine. The adverse forces feel that there is something in you that is discountenanced and restive because of the continuance of the inertia, and they hope that by pressing more and more, they will create a revolt. What is important for you in these circumstances is to make your faith, surrender, and Samatha Absolute. It is as great and essential a progress as to have high experiences, etc. It, the result of the obstruction of the physical consciousness, depends on the weak points of the individual and the stage of his progress. In a general way, the obstruction creates an inertia which impedes the working of the higher powers. In the early stage, it can obstruct progress altogether. Afterwards, it works to slow it down or else impede it by intervals of stationary inertia. The main difficulty of the physical consciousness is that it is unable, before it is transformed, of maintaining any tension of tapasya. It wants periods of assimilation, sinking back into the ordinary consciousness to rest. Also, there is a constant forgetfulness of what has been done, etc.